teach creativity? And if you can, can you teach it online to 44,000 people? Well, I was crazy enough to try this. And I'm going to tell you about my experience right now. And I'm going to start out with a short video. It's 40 seconds long, giving you a snapshot of the first assignment I gave in this online class. Folks in the class had to design the cover of their own autobiography as a way to introduce themselves to the class. And the reason I did this is so that, A, they could stretch their imaginations, even in the first assignment, so they could share a little bit about themselves with other people, but also for them to see that everything, everything in the world is ripe for innovation and creativity. So how did this class work? It's actually pretty simple. It starts out, each class, each section of the course, starts with a short lecture. Short lecture, about five minutes long. Okay, but guess what? To make that five minute lecture, it takes about five days. Really highly produced, really well thought out. The lecture might be on reframing problems or challenging assumptions or connecting combining ideas or how to work on creative teams. Then there are readings to support it. There are discussion groups online, but most important, there's a challenge. So every week there's a challenge. Sometimes it's a challenge for an individual, sometimes for it's a team. And then the students upload the results of their work, just like those, uh, the photos that you saw of the book covers. But the most important thing is that everybody evaluates everybody else. It's essentially crowdsourced grading. Now, I create a rubric, essentially a guideline on how to evaluate the assignments, and I do several of them so people can see some examples. And guess what? The more you evaluate, the more feedback you get. The most interesting and most valuable part about this is you get to see thousands of examples of solutions to the same problem. In a class at Stanford where I, I might have 40 students, we had, you know, they're teams of t four, so there are 10 projects, you get to see 10 solutions. Here you get to see hundreds if not thousands of solutions to the same problem. So who's in the class? It's folks from under 18 to over 80 from over 150 different countries, and most of them, sort of half of them women, half of them men, but most of them have college degrees. And in fact, quite a lot have advanced degrees. This is folks who want to keep learning, just like you showing up here to learn today. Folks who come to these online classes are hungry to find ways to continue their education. But there are some interesting challenges. There's a huge range of technical literacy. There are those folks who are digital natives who essentially show up and they exactly know what to do. They know how to make videos. They know how to collaborate online. But there are those people who are coming to this for the first time. In fact, one of the most interesting things I found is that's actually one of the most important things that people learn in the class is actually how to learn how to use these online tools. In addition, people are motivated to take this class for lots of different reasons. Some people actually spend 20 or 30 hours a week working on this. It becomes a key part of their life during the course, whereas others are tourists. It's quite interesting. They're really interested in finding out about this new world of online education, and they're there auditing. So what I've learned is that teaching in an online class is quite different than teaching at Stanford. When I'm at Stanford teaching, I'm on a surfboard, and I'm pretty experienced at teaching, so those waves come in, and I can ri ride them. When things happen that are surprising, I can usually figure out how to deal with it. But when you're teaching in an online class, you know what happens? You're on a cruise ship. And when you see an iceberg, you will hit it. I got really used to hitting a lot of icebergs. And there are surprises every single time I've done it. For example, in the last version of this class, I had the students form their own teams. Great. In my mind, a team is three to seven people. Well, some people in the class thought that was 300 to 700 people. And so what happened is we, had, all of a sudden I realized that some people invited everybody in the class to join their team. And so we ended up with towns as opposed to teams. So it became very difficult to unravel, and now I know that I have to put that in as a guideline the next time I teach the class. 
I also learned that I need to give individual assignments first. This is critical, because the first time I taught to the class, I did what I would do at Stanford, and I instantly threw folks on teams. But guess what? Because people have different levels of commitment, and some people are just auditing, you don't know who's there. So you need to do an individual assignment first to see who's actively involved. And in fact, in my last online course, 50% of those people who did the first assignment actually finished the course. But there were quite a number of people who didn't even do any of the work, even if they signed up. In addition, you need to break the assignments into smaller pieces because it really gets rid of the ambiguity and the places where people can have misunderstanding. But most important, I need to deputize the entire class because I can't possibly, as one person, answer all of the questions for, that are coming my way. So I essentially say, listen, collectively, all of you know much, much more than I do about a lot of different things. So if you see a question that's been posed and you know the answer, please answer it. And here's what happens. A number of people bubble up in the online class who are students, but also become the de facto TAs. And so you end up with a whole collection of folks who are helping each other. And it becomes an amazing, amazing online learning community. So um, I find that my role and the way I think of myself is chief instigator in this class. I get things going and then see what things happen. So let me tell you about one of the assignments to give you a little taste of what happens. In the last class, the final team project, the theme was pets. And so what the folks in the class had to do is pick a problem related to pets, any problem they wanted. They had to frame the problem, they had to brainstorm as a group, come up with at least 100 solutions, they needed to pick their favorite solution, they needed to prototype it, they needed to test it, and then they needed to create a creative story to communicate what they had done. Here's one of them as an example. things that's so fun about this is that there's so much room for experimentation here. And we are at the beginning of a world where we can innovate incredibly about um, education. And I find that the things I learned teaching in this very extreme example of an online class has definitely affected the way I think about teaching in my class at Stanford. The wonderful thing is that even though we're in the early days, students say that this is an incredible, meaningful learning experience. Folks say that this has brought meaning to their lives. They've gotten inspiration from working with folks from all over the world. That they're really changing the way that they think about education in general. And some people feel that this is one of the most powerful learning experiences they've ever had. So I want to invite you to my next experiment. Okay, starting this spring, in fact, registration opened yesterday. I'm doing a new online class. It's Creativity Music to My Ears. We're partnering with Warner Brothers Records, and they're bringing really big name artists and music executives to the table so that we can really use the class as the focus on looking at creativity in music and how we look at music in all of our lives. There's no necessity for any musical talent. I certainly don't have any. And uh, looking forward to something very exciting. So the other thing we're going to do is we're going to create a code so that anyone who's affiliated with Stanford in any way can sign up with this code so that you can find other Stanford students and alumni who are participating to join team with, teams with them and also to see their work. I hope you'll join this adventure and remember that creativity rules. Thank you.